Welcome to the Real Estate and Small Business for Management Consultant Show. Whether you hold a corporate nine to five or have determined that you want to explore the small business realm, this show is for you. Christian Carrillo talks to entrepreneurs and experts in the real estate and small business realms to discover what they do, why they do it, and how they do it to help show you the art of the possible. And now your host, Christian Carrillo. Welcome back to the Real Estate and Small Business Show. I am your host, Christian Carrillo. Boy, oh boy, do we have a special interview for you folks today. Our guest is Alex Mack. Thank you for being on the show, Alex. We are so so excited to have you. Thank you for having me, man. Thank you for having me. It's good to be here. Yeah, of course. So Alex Mack is an artist, songwriter, and music producer based out of Virginia, good old VA, VA. for his mix of jazz and hip hop that he calls jazz rap. Alex has been featured in publications such as MTV, Revolt TV, Hypebeast, and has even modeled for fashion companies such as Growing Blazers and Sperry. Boy, oh boy, I can tell this is going to be an amazing interview again. Alex, welcome to the show. We're so happy to have you on. Let's go. And this is super, super exciting. You know, we, we talked a little bit about who you are earlier and, and the way we all got connected is, is quite interesting and I'm sure we'll get in. But why, why don't you tell us a little bit more about who you are and, and how you got to where you are today? For sure, for sure. So, uh, yeah, so from Into the Purposes, uh, I am Alex Mack. Um, I'm a singer, songwriter, producer. Um, started playing the keys when I was six years old. Um, I, you know, I started taking piano lessons, you know, how it all starts out. Um, but when I was nine years old, um, I realized that I could play by ear. And um, when a nine year old realizes that they can play by ear, they don't really want to take lessons anymore. Um, I started, um, you know, listening to the radio and learning how to play songs. And then I realized I was like, hey, uh, you know, so the people who are making these songs play, play the piano, I could probably make my own song. So that's when I really started to, you know, get um, fascinated with like production and all that stuff. Used to watch my favorite producers on YouTube and all that. Um, So I started actually, I produced, I started producing at like 14. um, And then I wrote and recorded my first song at like 17 in high school. Um, And then in college, it kind of just, you know, it kind of just, just, just grew, grew from there. You know, I was on like the, like, like Dat Piff wave you know, you know, like, I'd, I'd probably say, yeah, like early, like early 2010s. So, you know, I was heavy on that. And then SoundCloud, SoundCloud was the thing that really, um, and I started posting consistently to SoundCloud. That's what kind of, uh, I started to see things kind of elevate. So that was probably about um, starting in 2016, um, 2017 and 2018 was when I really started to see a, a change as I um, just was consistent with everything. And then I was networking and meeting different people who, you know, I would end up, you know, working with to, to this very day who could really help me um, build a team and everything. So I love that. I love that. And it seems like you got involved in music at a very, very, very early stage. Yes. What was the story behind that? Did you have like relatives or was it just yeah. listening to music and you had a love for it? So my dad, uh, my dad was actually in a band in the late 70s and early 80s. Um, and they actually, you know, got to play with a lot of bands. Um, my dad has gotten to play with um, everybody from like, like SOS band and like Cameo and uh, bands like that. So um, his band, which was which was Vacus, they used to open for all these bands when they were come to to come to North Carolina, and then they started doing shows all up and down the East Coast. Um, and that's actually how he met my mom. My mom came to one of the shows, and that's how we met my mom. So I have a pretty like uh, I've always been in a family who has a big love for music, and I just really just picked it up by just being around. So um, I actually found jazz before I found hip hop. So that's how, you know why I have such an ear for jazz. Um, but just in this generation, you know, hip hop is the, you know, is the I would say the, arguably I say the most popular genre by far of our generation. So that's kind of just how I got sucked into it, and those became you know the you know two big parts of my life. Um, and yeah, I just uh, meshed them together. 
um, I always cite Tribe Called Quest as like the big, as the big pioneer for like what I'm doing. So uh, yeah, man. Yeah, I definitely had a lot of musical influences growing up for sure. I, I love that. Yeah, and I definitely see the, the story flowing there, right? It's very obvious yeah. that music running through your veins, but yeah. something interesting you, you had just mentioned was this sort of, of blending between jazz and rap, right? Yeah. We call it jazz rap. Yeah. Talk to us a little bit more about what that is. Like, what, what does it symbolize? Um, so um, I'll, so I usually break it down like this. So jazz, um, people all the time ask like, what is, what is, what is jazz? Like what makes something jazz? Um, jazz is just really, um, it's just, you know, it's like, you know, soulful. It pulls from those like soulful elements, but it's very just, it's very free flowing and free thinking. Um, and it always has, um, it uses the musical elements to paint a picture and usually, um, you know, communicate a message um, in whatever medium that is, be it the instruments or the songwriting or what have you. Um, Hip hop is very storytelling driven, very storytelling driven. Um, but the difference between jazz and hip hop is, is that hip hop, like, I think when it, the way it pulls people, it's those 808s, it's those um, drums that really make you, that really make you feel something, you know? Um, like when you hear like the like Meek Mill, like dreams and nightmares, like, you know, that just like pull something out of you, you know, like when you're in the uh, club or whatever. So um, really it's just combining those two, you know, it's, it was just me combining what I loved from the two. Um, and, you know, like I say, like my early, um, influences were the Tribe Called Quest and um, Kanye West for sure, mm. uh, Pharrell, like people um, who really did a good job of really blending those two. Um, so yeah, man. So that's kind of just like how I started to put it together. I love that. And I, <laughs> as you were saying that, I was like crack, cracking up a little bit because I think there is something about music that just makes you, like it, it just hits you, right? Like when sure. you speak male, I was thinking, you yeah. know, Hold on, wait a minute. Y'all, yeah, yeah right? exactly, exactly. It just pulls something out of you and like, you don't really know why. It's just like, you know, hits your soul. It's different. I love that. I love yeah. that. And yeah. you mentioned that as you were trying to grow your music career, mm -hmm. SoundCloud, and I'm sure other platforms became very important in, in sort yeah. of your brand, your message out. Sure. How, how did that sort of process work for you, right? Because as I think about it, you're you're in a very successful spot now, but I'm sure there are folks that have tried this in the past that haven't been successful, right? So yeah. through your process, what worked for you in, in sort of getting your brand and your message out and your music out? I would definitely say realizing that um, a team is very, very important uh, who's, who's around you. I'll say number one, um, when you're, an artist, especially like an independent artist, uh, you are, you know, for all intents and purposes, you know, like you are the CEO, like you are the, um, you know, like you are the leader. And um, one thing that I learned pretty early is, is that you're gonna get out of it what you put into it. Um, but the biggest thing being is you need a solid team who's dedicated. Um, the one, it's a uh, quality control you have somebody to run ideas by and number two is you should have people that you can pull knowledge from so you know somebody who knows marketing somebody who knows you know logistics I mean like even like shows you know like how are we going to do this so, you know like um how much are tickets being sold for it um you know what are the, what are the door deals like what is you know it's how much should we be charging for a show? Like you need somebody, or, you know, this can be one person who is very knowledgeable in, uh, you know, a lot of different areas, or most of the time, you know, I would say the most ideal is having people around that you can just pull from and pull knowledge and who can help point you in the right direction. And that was, I would say having a solid team and just a solid network of people um, was very, inst very inst instrumental um, in taking somebody creative like me and understanding my vision because it takes that too. You want people around you who understand where, where you're trying to go and like really believe in that. Um, 
that really want to see you go to go to the next level, but also know where to and what direction to point your vision. And I think that that's what a lot of artists are missing. I know a lot of great artists um, who just don't have the team behind them. Um, and that's one of the most challenging things to find. Um, and Instagram was really a big thing on bringing on kind of, you know, just me now being networking naturally and just being consistent on it. Uh, me and my team kind of gravitated towards toward towards each other. And then that's when I really started. That's when I really started to see things kind of take off when I started growing my like network of like people. So. I love that. And I think that's so powerful, right? Because yeah. a lot of times you hear individuals talk about how they're a self-made person, right? And yeah. the fact yeah. that, you know, I'm hearing it come from you, a successful person, that it's about who you surround yourself with, who's in your team, right? The, the whole idea that proximity is power. Sure. I completely agree. I think that that's so important. And yeah. Definitely where, where folks may may get lost. But yeah. on the topic, you know, as I think about your your overall process, you mentioned that your your team is very important, right? But I'm sure at least I experienced this and, and folks talk about this that I know that are in entrepreneurship or just pursuing amazing endeavors. Yeah. There were times in their career where they felt like giving up, right? Nothing was sure. the way. They ask themselves, is this even worth it? Sure. But did you experience that yourself? And, and sort of what was that like for you? What helped you keep yeah. going? Oh, yeah, for sure, man. Um, one thing I will say about, um, and this, honestly, this can apply. I mean, as as you definitely know, um, this uh, can this goes into anything, um, starting anything from scratch. Um, there are going to be times when, you know, you're going to have, obstacles you're gonna have the roadblocks you know that seem that are that seem big at the time um one thing that I always like like to keep in mind is the end goal um is the end goal more important than what you're going through and what you're having to deal with at these particular times um I think that that's very important to realize and goes going back linking it back to like a team once I started to get a team working with me I realized that I just wasn't doing this for myself anymore but I have other people that are um giving me part of their life to actually help um grow grow my vision and see that actually happen and become a reality so um I think getting through that a, a lot of it is just realizing like what your motivation is um and just and just getting by it and sometimes uh, it just goes into being resourceful to um to get through a lot of the obstacles like I will say in music uh, I've, I've gone through a lot of things by sitting down and actually thinking like okay what different options do I have to get through this so um but I've I've, I've, I've definitely along the way had tons <laughs> of like tons of times but the one thing in any artist um, that has had any type of success and this will tell you um, the only difference between an artist who makes it and an artist that doesn't make it is just it's literally just not giving up It's literally just keeping just going and going and going you know until you till you're able to make something happen I mean um, before I say I really started to see things change in probably 2018 um, I mean, I, at that point, I had been doing music for, I want to say about five years at that point. So, I mean, I could have given up, you know, a long, a long time ago before that, um, you know, drop, drop a song, get like 50, 60 plays on it on like SoundCloud, like could have given up a minute ago. But um, yeah, it's just pushing towards, it's just pushing through and you have to love it too. You have to actually love what you do, have a passion for it and have a passion for what you're doing it for for the reason that you're doing it so yeah man i love that and i i always hear successful folks say you know a lot of times when we first start on something we always think of the end goal mm. right the fame the money the respect. yeah yeah but as you go through it you just you fall in love with the process right exactly. i think to yeah. your point love what you do is just so important in anything that you you sort of sure. pursue for sure, man. For sure. Um, if you don't, if you don't have that love for what you do, the process is going to get, it's going to get, you know, it's going to get very, very tiring. It's going to get 
frustrating. It's going to get frustrating regardless. <laughs> but, um, you know, that's what really helps you get through it. Um, if I really didn't love music, I wouldn't like there's uh, there is no way there's 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 no way I could have gotten through like a lot of a, a, a lot of the things that like I've seen along the way. So I love that. I love that. So on that topic, I want to take a quick step back, right? Because we were we were chatting and joking about this before the interview, but yeah. when you you know you went to college and mm-hmm. with anybody that goes to school yeah. or get getting a gets an advanced degree, we're taught go to school, get a job, go find a cubicle job, right? Mm-hmm. And it, it's just the way, quote unquote, things are done, right? Yeah. Until you're 62.5 and then retire or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You decided to, to pursue a different route, right? You had this, sure. this passion for music sure. through your veins. Yeah. What was that process like for you? Were, were you like nervous? Were you scared? What was that like for you? Um, I think that... I'm somebody, when I have something in my head, when I have something that I really want to do, um, I, you know, I will weigh the, you know, I will weigh the, um, I weigh the consequences and everything like that. But if I, if I really believe in it, I would just start to do it. So when I first graduated from college, um, you know, I could have gone and just like, oh, I'm going to just get some job in some new city and move and everything like that. But I knew if I did that, um, I was not going to really be thinking about music a lot. I was going to be thinking about being 22 and being a new college graduate and surviving. I wasn't going to be thinking about, you know, like music and, oh, what's my strategy for this? And so because of that, um, I got out of school. Um, I moved back home with my parents. and. there was actually a business reason for that too. I was like, you know, I want to have as least bills as possible, you know? So I, so I moved, I moved home with, with, with my parents. I think a lot of um, people in our generation actually kind of have a problem doing this. Um, I had no problem sacrificing up front. You know, I had no problem sac- sac- sacrificing, a, you know, my own place to live and, you know, having this and that just so I could, you know, I got a job, I got a job, I could, I got a job at, gu- at Guitar Center. Uh, that, that actually helped me network a lot too, like very early, early on. Um, and yeah, I just sat, you know, I, I was, I was there, I saved money. I originally, I eventually ended up going back to school for IT. And while I was back in school for IT, that's when I really actually started to see music kind of just like, um, kind of, kind of just like take off. So, um, but yeah, just early on, I just, I just, you know, made sacrifices and I was like, I can see this, I can see this paying off in the long run. So I just think it's about sacrificing early on in order to get what you want later. So. Yeah, I love that. And it, it relates to the point you brought up earlier, right? Where you don't know any successful people that gave up along the way, right? It's yeah. just those people that exactly. keep running through concrete walls. Exactly powerful because i think a lot of times maybe we think in the short term right we want the benefit right now yeah but it's those folks that think long term like you do that that yeah. are strategic about the decisions that they make For sure. those folks that make it yeah most definitely man most definitely i mean that was one of the um i i've seen my dad and you know my dad has started businesses and things too and um i just from a really early age, I saw him, you know, push through a lot of obstacles to do those things. And so that kind of also instilled in, 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 instilled that um, kind of that like tenacity to keep, you know, progressing towards what I really wanted to do. So I saw that very, very early on. And I think that's important for people to, to, to realize that it's not going to most of uh, 98.9% of the time is not going to happen just automatically when you first start, you know, realistically, it probably won't happen for the first year or two, you know, at least not to the degree that you want it to be. Um, you know, it's not, you know, anything worth having is, is it going to be this like microwavable, you know, success that we think. 
Yeah, it yeah. Comes, comes with it. <laughs> I think a lot of times we see people on social media and we think yes. overnight hits, right? Yeah. We, you don't know the story behind everything. Like you mentioned, you were you were running through walls for five years before you started to really see that traction, right? Yeah. For sure. So that's, that's so so important. And and look, Alex, before we jump into our our quick response round yeah. here, as I'm listening to you talk, right, I, I do have to ask you this quick question. Yeah. Who would you say, you know, now, now that you're working in music, mm -hmm. who would you say is is your favorite artist, right? Or who's been the artist that has impacted you the most? I would say the artist that's impacted me the most. Um, I would have to say, I would have to say, tough one. I it's 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 always a tie between three different people. Um, let's hear. So, it, let's hear. It. So it's always a tie between uh, Kanye West, um, Pharrell, and Childish Gambino. Mm. Those are the three. Those those I think are my are the, are like were like really huge influences of mine. Like yeah, like early on I would say. I love that, and, and I've yeah. seen like the the whole Kanye documentary. Yeah, it's, it's always interesting. Back yeah. to the point that you mentioned, right? Like seeing where folks start and what they sacrifice to ultimately get to where they are. I think that that is. Um, it's very powerful, right? Awesome, Alex. So, you know, it's it's really been a pleasure getting to know more about you. And, and I'm sure that our listeners picked up on some golden nuggets and I think your story is just amazing and a testament to to why it's important to keep going right to know that you're going to stumble but if you fall fall forward and just keep sure. it right exactly. so are you ready for a quick response round let's go of course awesome so first one here for you if you lost it all today what would you do um I would um I believe that it's always important to keep people around who have had to deal with the same thing um so i think one of my biggest advantages was having my like father um i the, one of the first things i would do is i would go and i would get advice on how to on how to bounce back on the first things that i need to do that'd be one of the first things i do was get advice on the next thing i need to do like how i need to move going 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 back you always want to have people in your corner who have been through a lot of the you know have seen a lot of the you know pitfalls and things like that to be able to be able to give you counsel on how to move forward um i think it's very important to have just some mentor like that um mm -hmm. to who can kind of like guide you because there are going to be times where you deal with you deal with the adversity no mm -hmm. no no matter what it is so it i think it really pays off to have those types of people in your corner all of that that is so powerful that is so powerful for sure going forward what do you have planned in your endeavors and your music life and why going forward um we're working on two projects at once uh collaborations with some really dope artists um and yeah just laying out you know music videos uh you know as we grow music videos are going to be more like you know more like short films um because when you do music people don't really buy into the music they like buy into the they buy into you as a person so i just want to um you know share who i am more with 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 my fans and um everybody who supports me and just have a ton you know just a whole ton a whole ton of uh a whole ton of flame coming you know so. i love it i love it give our listeners one piece of advice today what would it be i would say that you would be surprised how far you can get by just being yourself um i think 
the biggest thing that I've learned, especially in how music is today, the way that people receive it. Um, people can, pe people know when something is organic and if it's, you know, if it's just, you know, if it's constructed. Um, mm -hmm. I think that everybody's more effective when you are yourself and you are doing what you're the best at. Um, I would say, if you, if you have a certain trait, like for instance, like my trait is I'm a very social person. That was always my thing. I could always talk to anybody. Um, I was able to use that to literally make something, out of, you know, I'd to make a, essentially a business off of just being myself. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that's really the most important thing. I love that. I love that. All right. How can our listeners get to know more about you and connect with you? Sure, sure. Um, so on all socials, I am Easy Alex Mac. Um, easy, like the word, Alex Mac M A C K. You can find me on Instagram, Twitter, all those places. Even though I'm mostly on Instagram for sure. You know. Awesome, awesome, Alex. Again, thank you so much, listeners. Of course. Check out my man's new single. It is hot. Make sure you check it out. Alex, thanks so much for hopping on the show. We really appreciate it. And we look forward to, to seeing your continual success. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate you. Thank you for, uh, for uh, having me, man. And yeah, man, I'm definitely glad to have uh, met you guys. For sure. We'll be in touch. We'll be in touch. Of course, man. Peace. Thank you for listening to the Real Estate and Small Business for Management Consultant Show brought to you by Quetzal Capital Group. Quetzal Capital Group works with investors nationwide to invest in real estate while also looking to add value in the communities where they operate. Quetzal Capital Group, client-centered, data-driven, result-oriented. Connect with us online at quetzalcapitalgroup.com to learn more.